Hi, welcome to this small little video about the pass-through blending mode in Substance Painter. My name is Lawrence and I'm going to run you through how to use it. So some people might have heard of the pass-through blend mode. You might have seen it because it sits at the top right below the normal blending mode and you might not know what it's for exactly. Now there's two real main use cases for the pass-through blending mode. One is with filters and the other one is with brushes like uh, the smudge brush or the cologne stamp brush. So uh, I'll show you the first way to use them with the clone stamp. So say we would want to clone stamp something in here um, and I want to clone stamp the entire material. I just want to move some of this stuff around. You'd make sure you have an empty layer. So I'll create an empty layer up here and you want to set the blend modes to pass through. So set it to pass through. And you see straight away that the icon actually changes here. The thumbnail starts to represent what sits below it. And this gives you a good hint of what the pass-through blend mode actually does. Despite the name sounding very passive, it takes a, sort of like a snapshot of what sits below it and duplicates that in the layer. It's like anchor points, but then it doesn't work on a single layer. It works on everything that sits below it on multiple layers. So if you've come from old school Photoshop texturing, this is like a stamp visible, control alt shift E, which you would use to do like a sharpen on your final texture. And if I want to use this for the, um, the clone stamp, I have to make sure that I set it up for every of the channels here. So I'll go to, uh, let's see, let's go to height, set it to pass through. Let's go to roughness and set it to pass through. Let's go to metallic, set it to pass through, normal, Set it to pass through. And this one actually has quite a few, so you can see this gets a bit involved. In a moment, I'll show you a trick that you can use to not have to do all of these manually. So I'll go back into base color. I'll pick my, uh, my clone stamp here. Click V to sample a certain area. And you can see now that I can clone stamp out certain parts by simply just using the clone stamp on what used to be an empty layer, but now it represents what sits below. And so to show you that this actually updates is if I decide, for example, to go all the way to the bottom and change the color of this here, let's say we want to make it a little bit more saturated like that, it still works with the clone stamp. Even if I would apply something completely different in here, let's see, let's just go into this, uh, this dirt here, uh, mask editor, and let's say that we want to change the uh, the contrast quite a bit. Boom, we change the contrast. And you see it still updates along with uh, with all the rest of the textures. So the clone stamp on a pass-through layer is completely non-destructive. I mean, I can turn it on and off. So you can see it's just on a separate layer. You can do the same thing if you use the uh, smudge brush. So if I'm going to take the smudge brush here, make this a little bit bigger and use it here so you can see it clearly. I'm smudging things around. In this case, this doesn't really necessarily look very good, but you can see it's still non-destructive and I can use it like that. Now there's another way to use the, uh, the pass-through blending mode and I'm gonna get rid of this layer to show you that. And this is actually where the trick comes in to make it easier than setting up every separate blending mode. If you go into filters here, and you find the filter you want to use. In this case, I'd like to sharpen uh, the entire texture quite a bit. And let me just turn off this one in here. There we go. Uh, the texture is a bit soft. I'd like to sharpen a bit. So you find the filter you'd like to use. You drag and drop it into your layer stack, like so. And it creates a new layer where pass-through is enabled for everything in that layer. Now, I have to be a little bit careful. This is, this is a little bit much. If I go into my sharpen, I can actually reduce it. And uh, it's quite smart. It turns it off for the normal and uh, the height map since you don't want it there. Uh, and it's up to you if you want to keep it in the roughness, if you want to keep it in the metallic. I, I do want to keep it there. So um, easy way to set all your layers to pass through and create a new empty layer is to drag and drop your filters in there. So I'm going to jump into a bit more of an advanced example and show you how you can use it for uh, some other things. So I've got a new example open here. Uh, just a disclaimer, this is from Dota 2. I downloaded this free model online. We'll put the link in the uh, description below. I adjusted a little bit and I worked together with an artist at Allegrhythmic to uh, texture this as a little test, a little demo for like a stylized texturing style. Now the reason I use this instead of like a typical PBR asset is that with a stylized asset like this, the pass-through blend mode actually comes into play a lot more if you want to use certain like baked lighting filters and, uh, and the like. So um, I can show you a little bit how I set up this, uh, this gold here this gold stuff. Uh, this uses a lot of pass-through blending modes uh, and uh, I'll just run you through how it's uh, basically made. So we'll open up stylized gold here and it gets a bit complicated perhaps is that I'm texturing this with an output that goes only into the base color but when I create my materials I actually still have a roughness and a metal and a normal map channel in there. Why is that? 
because a lot of these baked lighting filters make use of that. So you can see here, if I um, break down my stylized gold material, I just turn some of this off. It starts off with just a flat color like this. And there's actually some post process that runs over the top, which I'll turn off as well. I do a little bit of mask magic to add some edge glow and that type of thing. This isn't really lighting, it's just using the curvature and the like. And then I enable the baked lighting that goes over the top. And uh, the baked lighting is a pass through blend mode that uses the baked lighting stylized filters. So I'll just delete this one and we'll build it up quickly from scratch. I'll take the baked lighting filter here, drop it on like so. And then I have to start customizing this a little bit. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that it inputs, it takes the inputs for metal or roughness and specular or glossiness. And why is that? Well, it's actually, despite this being a base color only thing, the baked lighting filter makes use of whatever roughness and metallic is defined below it to calculate the baked lighting. So interestingly, um, you, you actually have to set up a metallic and roughness to get this to work properly, even though it's just for the base color. Once I've done that, I'm going to decide to only output uh, diffuse. I don't really like the specular very much. And then uh, my first step is to sort of play with the position of the sun a little bit. So I'm trying to find like, uh, get it lit from the top a bit like that. I'm trying to find, yeah, something like this. We'll make the sun a bit more intense as well. Oh, now it sits at the bottom. Move it around. Yeah, there we go. We've got it at the top now. These sliders are not the easiest to work with. So that's sort of the basic idea I did for the first um, part. You can add some more lights. For example, what I did is to get some red glow for the bottom is we added the red light from below. So turn on that red light. And then we're going to sort of search for like that, getting this red glow that comes from the bottom. So that's how this was set up. So the baked lighting, again, if you do the drag and drop of a filter in there, it sets up the pass through automatically. If you do it manually, you'd have to make sure that you set the pass through up for the metallic and for the roughness as well, because the baked lighting filter can only use the metal and roughness from layers that sit below if you're using the pass through blend mode. Um, so that's the basic setup I did for that. And then to show you that there's a few other things I, uh, I did in this, um, stylized post process, a few more things have been applied. So there's another baked lighting that sits on the top. And this one sort of mainly does adds a little bit of light on top of his head. So things don't look so dark. And then next up, there's an HSL perceptive in here. So I can delete this one. And we'll just throw in another one just to show you again, HSL perceptive, where I can do something specific like, okay, add some more saturation, make the whole thing a little darker. And it works on the entire texture at once. Again, so doing adjustments on your entire texture, non-destructively, best through dragging and dropping filters on there. And then finally, we've got the typical sharpen going on here as well. So same deal. If you don't want to use this, you would take a sharpen, drop it on, and then play with the uh, the settings a bit. So you can see the difference from using these. And it's, it's really quite smart since you can apply effects to your whole texture non-destructively while still being able to tweak everything that sits below it. So that's a little rundown of the pass through blending mode. Keep in mind, you can use this with either the clone stamp or the smudge tool. Uh, you can also use it with the blur tool, by the way, if you use this one here, it's um, that also works. And then together with filters, you would use those from the library. So um, you can, of course, still do this manually by adding the filter by saying right click, add filter, and then dropping it in like this. But that does tend to take a little bit longer because you have to set them all up specifically. So doing the drag and drop makes it a lot quicker. So I hope you've learned something from this video and um, can't wait to see what you create with this pass-through blending mode. Thanks for your attention. Bye.